If you're currently seated in the very center of the struggle bus, or your seniors are waving little senioritis flags at you, you're not alone. As summer beckons and the buildup of busy from the year weighs on you and on your students, the last six weeks can be tricky. I know that you want to acknowledge that the end of the year is close. You want to do something maybe a little bit later, a little extra engaging. You want to hook those students back in. You do not want to wave any flags of your own. But you don't necessarily have the energy to invent a wheel and start riding it around like an educational unicycle. Know what I mean? Today on the podcast, we're talking about unit and project ideas for the end of the year. Whether you need something to light up engagement for your students and for you, for one week or for six, you'll get plenty of ideas. Plus, we're going to talk a little bit about why relationship building is still a key player in the build up to the end. It's easy to think of relationship building, community building as something for the first six weeks, but it can be really helpful in the last six weeks too. Okay, are you ready? Hey there, I'm your host, Betsy Potash, and One Pager's project-based learning and choice reading are my jam. I believe in you, and my goal is to help you explore all the creative possibilities you dream of for your classroom. I'm an educator, a chocolate cake aficionado, a traveler who can't wait to get back to Barcelona, and the kind of mom who brings her own mini makerspace to her kid's classroom when she comes to volunteer. I know this for sure, creativity isn't always easy. As a creative teacher, you get parent calls you treasure, and plenty of sidelong comments you'd rather forget. But here's the bottom line. Creative education can ignite a spark in your students and change their lives forever. You and I know this. You're an innovator. And while it's sometimes hard, it's so worth it. So let's explore the world of creative education together. Welcome to the Spark Creativity Teacher Podcast. All right, so let's start with community building. It's easy to think about this as something that builds our routines, builds our foundation, and that it really belongs in August and September. But taking a little time to sort of re-up your relationships and build community again at the end of the year can help everyone stay in it, right? They're going to be happier to see each other, happier to see you, happier to be in your classroom if they're feeling that strong sense of connection with each other and with you. So I think this is a great time to reintroduce something like attendance questions. If you haven't heard about this before, it's just like a little fun thing you can do for five minutes at the start of class where you call everybody's name. Now you probably don't need to call roll anymore, right? You can just glance up and see if everybody's there. But do it anyway sometimes and just ask them a funny question or show them one of those slides that has four different pictures of hilarious meerkats and say like, Which of these meerkats represents your day to day? I have already built a bunch of these funny slides for you. I've got three weeks of them ready for you in the show notes. So you can make this super easy addition to your final weeks. This could also be a good time in the year to pause and do one word goals. Now this is a favorite project of mine. It's a favorite project for a lot of people where you invite students to choose one word to describe their goal. And this is very common in the new year. It's pretty common at the start of the school year. But what about the last six weeks? This is a time where even our best students (laughs) sometimes just want to slide. They just want to do nothing. But setting a goal, how do they want to leave their school year? How do they want to be remembered? What kind of friend do they want to be? What kind of team captain, what kind of daughter or son, child, how do they want the year to feel to them at the end? This could be a fun chance to just pause, talk about that, talk about leaving, you know, especially if you have seniors, what can they do in these final weeks to connect with teachers that they cared about, connect with their best friends? It can feel so weird for them to make this transition. And so, They're in an unusual headspace. I remember it myself. I remember that very weird feeling like 75% of my mind was already in California where I was going to go to school and the other 25% of me just didn't really know what to do. 
All right, this is also a nice time to just do little things to connect with kids. I love what CJ Reynolds shared earlier this year on episode 165, these small strategies that you can use to connect with kids. Like I love the post-it strategy. You keep a pad of post-its on your desk in these final few weeks. And when a student who is unengaged does something good or just is in your classroom and you want to connect with them, find a way to leave a post on their note that says like cool shoes or great comment earlier or, you know, nice race in the track meet yesterday. I was really impressed. Just like a little way of reaching out. Now I know at this point in the year, you're probably wishing somebody was doing that for you. (laughs) You wish your department chair or your principal or your mom could just swing by your desk with a post-it and say, hey, I see you showing up for your students. So let me take this opportunity to virtually post it you. I am so impressed. Here you are listening to a teacher podcast at this point in the year when you're exhausted. The very name of the podcast says you're struggling to make it to the end of the year and yet you're here looking for more strategies, looking to connect with your students. So you're awesome. <laughs> the other thing is when you when you reach out with post-its like this or however you reach out to students to keep building that connection, the increased positivity around you is going to help give you that energy back. I don't know about you, but when I'm working with kids who want to be working with me, I have way more energy. And so making some little tweaks to try to help boost their positivity is also going to help boost your positivity. I know you know that. All right, last thing on relationship building is just a a small idea and this kind of forms a bridge between the relationship part of our show and the curricular part because for me there's nothing to boost engagement like a special event if you can if you can make it viable I mean if you can get enough buy-in to make it work maybe it's going to be a choice reading festival that you have in the last week of school. Maybe you're going to have a poetry slam. You're going to have a gallery night of all the best work from the year and you're going to invite parents. Maybe you're going to perform Shakespeare scenes in an outdoor theater in the park downtown. Anything like that, (laughs) where students feel that authentic audience, they have a reason to participate in class because they're preparing for the special event. I think that can be very helpful both in building community and buy-in Um, and in giving you sort of a central focus for your curriculum that will help students pay attention. Okay, so speaking of curriculum, now we're going to move into some ideas for things you can do at the end of the year. I was talking to one of my members in the Lighthouse this week, and she was talking about how she was doing novels in verse as her final unit of the year for her seniors. And she was so thrilled because they love them. They love the novels in verse. And so there was this like happy spirit in the air and the kids were enjoying the units. And so she was happy and everyone was happy. And that's what we want, right? So if you are feeling like whatever you had planned for the end of the year is just not going to cut it, maybe now is the time to bust out something that you've always wanted to teach. You're really excited about, you know, it's going to be a little bit experimental, but hey, Now is the time for an experiment. Now is the time to try to boost your engagement. So I'm just going to throw out a few ideas um, to kind of get your gears turning, but I bet you have something in the back of your mind. You can also look back through, you know, the 160 or so podcasts that came before this, because this is the kind of thing we're always talking about around here. Okay, so a few ideas. These first ideas are sort of shorter curriculum options. If you just need to re-engage your kiddos for a couple weeks at the end of the year um, rather than like for six weeks. So maybe you want to do like a quick podcast unit. I am totally obsessed right now with the show Smash Boom Best, and I know it's meant for younger kids, but I listen to it with my family so much um, on our travels over spring break, and I just... I love it. <laughs> so there, there's one idea, but maybe you've got seniors that want to listen to Life Kit or the School of Greatness and are like thinking about their life ahead. Or maybe you have kids who are obsessed with true crime and you want to do Serial or Limetown. Or maybe you want to do storytelling with a show like This American Life or The Moth. There are so many different possibilities for a podcast unit. You can organize kids into podcast clubs and give them choice over what show they listen to. Or you can listen to a huge range of shows one at a time in class, sort of introducing different models and then have students 
podcasts themselves. And we've talked about that here a great deal. You can always use um, that super easy app, Vokaroo, and that's all you need to do. You don't need to set up like a a podcasting studio in your classroom. You can give students Vokaroo. You can have them work on scripts. You can let them add some theme music of their own and create their own podcast. Okay, another idea. How about a careers unit? Especially for older kids, this can be such a great way to honor the fact that they're starting to think past school. They're thinking about what comes next, maybe what they're going to study in college or what kind of program they're going to do after high school or what kind of job they're going to get. So one thing I really like to do in a careers unit is invite kids to think about all the careers whose paths they cross every day. And now at first this might seem like there are almost none and I find this to be a fascinating process. Like say a kid takes the metro to school, walks into school, goes to school, leaves, stops by a restaurant, goes home. Maybe think, okay, they might think I saw a metro transport authority driver. I saw teachers, I saw a principal, and I saw chefs and waiters and cashiers. Those are all the careers I saw today. But then they start to think a little broader. (laughs) They think about the clothes their friends were wearing, who designed those clothes, who manufactured those clothes, who advertised those clothes. They see somebody's smartphone who designed that smartphone, who programmed it, who sold their friend that smartphone. They see a car, (laughs) who designed the car, who did the engineering for the engine, who helped develop the technology for the hybrid um, vehicle that just passed them, who who painted the car, who fixes the car, right? Once they go a little deeper, they can come up with hundreds of different careers that they're surrounded by every day. You can do this career scavenger hunt. You can have them research startups and present back to the class. You can have them go out and interview somebody in a field that they're interested in. You can kind of quickly put together a lot of different fun um, career unit activities that can help re-engage your kids at the end of the year when they're already thinking beyond the classroom walls. All right, another one that could be really interesting right now would be a TED Talks unit that was specifically focused on AI. I feel like everybody is thinking about AI. Everyone is talking about it. Ted has put together a collection of talks about AI, many of which are really recent. And I watched two of them yesterday and it was so interesting. One of them was basically saying, you know, it's inevitable that we're going to create a super intelligence that could destroy humanity. And another one was saying, wow, this new AI is going to allow us to like have robots build bridges without human intervention. Maybe our future robotic intelligence is going to help us solve global warming. Like one painted a picture of total devastation and one painted a picture of incredible inspiration. And I think You know, it would be very interesting to let students hear from a lot of experts about AI right now and be formulating some opinions of their own. I think it would lead to great discussion. It would lead to great um, writing because this is going to be a huge thing for our kids, right? They need to decide what they think about it because they are soon going to be in decision-making positions at startups, in companies, um, in education, in politics. And so to start thinking about it now, I think is going to feel very relevant to them. All right. So now let's move into a few slightly longer options. Um, The first one I want to talk about is Genius Hour. Genius Hour is an ideal way, in my eyes, to finish out the year The thing about Genius Hour is that kids get to do what they're truly interested in. Maybe they dream of starting their own TikTok channel. Maybe they um, really want to launch a summer business around creating a day camp in their backyard. (laughs) Maybe they, you know, want to be a fashion designer and they and they want to lay out their first line. Whatever they want to do is okay because ELA is so ideally positioned for this. They can use their ELA skills on anything to document the process of their learning. So maybe you want them to blog about what they learn. Maybe you want them to do a vlog, a video blog. Maybe you want them to do sort of an Instagram style thing where they have photos and videos and captions to capture all of the interesting things that they're doing. Um, maybe a podcast <laughs> if you're really into podcasting, which I am. So 
well done you. Anyway, Genius Hour is fantastic. I have done several podcasts on Genius Hour and a lot of blog action. So I'm going to put some links in the show notes for you. I can pretty much walk you through this whole thing. All right, another idea, you could do what that fabulous teacher in the Lighthouse was telling me about this week and do a book club to end the year. Maybe you want to do novels in verse like she was. It was a huge hit for her. (laughs) Or maybe you want to do graphic novels. I think either of those two are very compelling, very fun things for students to read that also have, you know, valuable content but are just a touch easier for them to approach independently, especially at the end of the year when they're tired. Another option would be like really compelling memoirs. I think whatever you choose for your book clubs, try to choose titles that are naturally engaging that you feel like kids would get excited about um, because that's, again, just going to help everybody pay more attention, stay more in it at the end of the year. Now, when I suggest book clubs I don't suggest you use the formal roles of like a literature circles unit that's designed for slightly younger kids I would really push for different activities they can do in class after they read maybe silent discussions maybe hexagonal thinking maybe they create one pagers or sketch notes around what they've read maybe they're creating video book trailers that they can show to their classmates I think there are lots of fun things you can do in class to to kind of cover the reading and and allow them to engage around their books without having these kind of formal discussions where each official role is reporting like here's the vocabulary from last night here's the here are the connections to contemporary events there's a place for that um, especially with younger kids but I don't think the end of the year is it (laughs) Um, so I would really suggest just doing some of your favorite activities with the books um, in their small groups. All right, finally, I want to talk about one of my favorite final exam projects because I think you could extend this final exam project into a whole unit at the end of the year that was really meaningful. And that project is the graduation speech project. I think this can be, you know, such an interesting way to end the year um, where you have your students eventually look back through everything that they've read and talk about why books matter. And this is something that I feel like is really kind of under attack, right? I mean, a lot of books are being banned. A lot of people are switching, um, you know, so heavily over to short things to read, (laughs) whether that's like little tiny news blurbs online or just captions. Now, I think there's a place for great writing in all different forms, but I absolutely think that books are still super important in our world. Um, And to let students argue for it using the books they've read and also any other books that they've read and their choice reading and their independent reading at home, to make an argument for one of these things. So so here I'm going to spread them out for you, although they're also in the show notes. So they can argue for how literature helps people understand themselves, their own lives, their own history. They can argue for how literature helps people understand the lives of others and empathize with other people. They can argue for how literature makes it easier to understand history, or they can argue for how literature importantly illuminates issues of morality. Okay, so any of those four premises They're going to use the books that they've read to argue for one of those things. And then they're going to write their speech and they're going to present it back to the class during the final exam. So building up to that, if you have this long runway when you're trying to re-engage them at the end of the year, I'd say you find some compelling graduation speeches. Um, Maybe you want to show clips of Shonda Rhimes giving her graduation speech at her alma mater. Maybe you want to find a Jason Reynolds speech, a, an Amanda Gorman speech, a, a Barack Obama speech. Um, you know, whatever leaders and figures that you think your students would be really interested in their lives and their wisdom, you can you can look them up. You can find um, their speeches and maybe pull clips or or pull the whole thing watch them in class, discuss them, talk about what makes them strong or, or, or what problems they have. And all of that is sort of leading students towards um, how they can create their own speech that will be interesting for their classmates and also really hit on what has been important to them in the books they've read during the year. And I think that's a really strong way to finish the year. Okay, so there we have it. 
We talked about what to do if you're struggling to make it to the end of the year, what you can try. Try teaching something that you love, that you think students will love, even if you have to make a quick change, and try to work on pouring into the community and the relationship building in class just for a few more weeks because even though that's one more thing to do, it's one more thing to do that's going to lift them up and it's going to lift you up and it's just going to make everybody feel better. Okay? Thanks so much for being here today. To check out the show notes, just head over to nowsparkcreativity.com. And remember, we have a new Thursday series is called Highly Recommended. So you can watch for that short podcast episode dropping into your feed on Thursdays. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Until next time, take care of yourself and stay creative.